Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip. Who wants to be a one man army? <laughs> Splendid. Now, here's the bit where I usually give you a taste of the plot. I'm not gonna do that here. There really isn't one. It's just a war. Three factions vie for supremacy. The green belts. That kind of remind me of army men. The grey collars. And the brown pants. Who actually look a bit more orange. Now go. Win the war by any means necessary. The only things in this game that actually resemble a story are a couple of lines of dialogue that pop up in the left hand corner of the screen. And they're not much of a briefing. Essentially they just say go capture this area or go get them. Go. So the action is this game's bread and butter. Fortunately, it's good action. In this war amongst factions, you take control of one of the soldiers. Presented from a sort of isometric viewpoint. And the main campaign is divided into various maps. And each one of these has to be conquered in order to complete the game. And you do this by going into area after area, capturing them. And capture of an area starts when the ratio of your soldiers to theirs in the area is 3 to 2. So kill well enough in the area and then defend it long enough for it to become yours. You do have an AI commander that gives orders. But there is absolutely no penalty for ignoring them. Although in a lot of situations it's a pretty good idea to follow their lead. Unless of course you have an idea or a strategy that would make you on your own or you and a squad a force to be reckoned with. But usually it will be you and your fellows charging head on into a fight. And then you die. Maybe this time you'll throw in some flanking. Oh, you died. Maybe take a sniper rifle this time and get to the high ground. Ooh, this is a lovely kill zone. I must be the main threat now. And then, once again, you die. But eventually though this time. Maybe try something a bit more creative this time. I know, I've unlocked the ability to form a squad. Get in the jeep, maggots. We're gonna perform a drive-by. Ooh. That failed in a different way. But it was fun while it lasted. The cheap is really nimble. And eventually you will try some other creative plans of action that don't align with the AI's orders. Time for some covert action. Killing from afar or in close quarters. Or as you see here, try and blow up their anti-aircraft emplacement. Or maybe some other target. Maybe try and take over a poorly defended area all by yourself. Or maybe with a tight strike squad. These tactics are fun and can be game changing. When they work. And fair warning, when you die you will have to respawn. And on some of those missions, usually miles away. Having lost some of the equipment you purchased specifically for stealth. <sighs> Back to the front. Eh, but don't worry. You respawn very quickly, and when it works, you feel like a special forces master. And if you didn't give up out of frustration, you'll be back in the fray in no time. Let's go on to how the action itself feels. It feels very tight, responsive, and quick. The tiny soldier kind of feels like an extension of yourself. And you aim by pointing your mouse cursor, aiming and changing enemy targets very quickly. And scoring a kill in this view is very satisfying, especially when you're sniping. And switching between prone, crouching, and standing is almost immediate. Your movement is quite free. The game also has an RPG element in that you do earn experience. This unlocks different squad sizes, weapons, and very importantly, radio commands. Requisition and airstrike. Reinforcements? Maybe even a vehicle. Well, that was money poorly spent. Who ordered the boat? The currency I'm talking about is RP, or I'm guessing requisition points? And radio commands are the most expensive thing you can use that currency for, and should probably be used sparingly. But fortunately, almost everything you do gives you RP. Killing enemies, destroying vehicles, gathering intel, destroying strategic targets. Also, you can sell enemy equipment to the armory. Do this five times for the same standard enemy weapon, and you unlock it for your own use. 
But unfortunately, it seems like enemy weapons function pretty much the same way yours do, except with a different cosmetic touch. Perhaps there are small differences in functionality as well, but if that is the case, the differences are so small, nothing that will make you say without a doubt that they're different. No smoking guns here. Did it? Absolute punishment. But sometimes enemies will drop laptops and briefcases. These are worth a lot of RP and unlock a special piece of equipment. And these definitely are different. For instance, a suppressed sniper rifle. Rifles with different rates of fire. Deployable weaponry. So there is progression of a sort, and in the later game you will be a force to be reckoned with, and will have some tactical flexibility. But honestly, sometimes it's very difficult to not just fall into the old rhythm of assaulting the enemy head on. That was my default instinct. And sometimes that works, delightfully. But when it didn't, it felt like a downright slog. But hey, at the very least, getting stuck like that encourages creative thought in your plans to dislodge the enemy obstacle. As mentioned earlier, failing those are also quite deflating, but it keeps it fresh. And other times, you actually kind of run over the enemy. Some areas were that easy. And on some occasions, your faction's AI can take over areas without your help. Although in all fairness, those occasions are rare. Quick side note. I believe that the enemy AI is quite good, but it's not particularly creative. In all this time I've played this game, there was not one occasion where I lost an area due to the enemy performing a sneak attack. But they do have the capacity to take areas back from you. Visually, the areas look a bit pale, but the soldiers are brightly colored. It works quite well because the terrain is mainly there to give you something to work off of as cover and give you tactical decisions to make, and thus your enemies and allies stand out beautifully. Combine that with the isometric viewpoint, and you get a very visceral toy soldiers kind of experience. And in combat there is no music either, you just hear the carnage far and near. The only music this game has, really, is located in the menu. It has a very jaunty Glory of the Military track. Quite playful. The standard campaign took me about 24 hours to complete. There were two final missions, one for each one of the opposing factions. I tried the one for the brown pants. Now that is a slog. There are two other campaigns as well. Both involve you fighting alone against the enemies. One where the one-shot, one-kill mechanics are still intact. The other where you fight against zombies, and they're quite bullet spongy. But these, I believe, take place on the same maps as the standard campaign. And thus, because these campaigns essentially require replaying, those areas, I doubt they will tickle your fancy as much as the standard campaign. The game is cheap on Steam. 109 Rand full price, 21 Rand 80 on sale. That's 91 cents per hour of gameplay, which is excellent. Also, it does technically work on the War Horse. Barely. And when a fast paced game like this lags this much on the War Horse, I wouldn't really argue against you for saying it's unplayable there. So you probably will require something newer or stronger than the War Horse to play it properly. But since it does work a little bit on the Warhorse, I don't think you would require something that much more powerful. But just in case you're of a specs, take a gander and decide for yourself whether you want to risk it. But on a more positive note, it only takes up 662 megabytes on the hard drive. So it's a relatively easy download. It is violent though. Not gory. Body parts don't fly around, but there are pools of blood. So stereotypically, for some kids, it's fine, for other kids, not. Imagine if your child would be okay to play as a small unit dropped into a conflict zone, far off viewpoint, 
fear grim realities, but theoretically you can meet enemies at any time, but you hear far off gunshots and explosions. Maybe keep it away if they're impressionable enough to see people as expendable, aka toy soldiers. This is a lovely tactical action game. You have a lot of freedom of movement and freedom of tactical and strategic choices. The action is flowing, satisfying, visceral, isometric. And visually it is kind of striking and unique. The landscapes can come across as a bit plain though at times. And the visual theme is a bit strange at times, because those landscapes are that plain, but the soldiers are so brightly coloured, and the text has a kind of comic book style to it. But hey, maybe that fits, because everything is kind of cell shaded I suppose? But I maintain it looks good. A battlefield for your soldiers to roam. Doesn't get too bogged down in details. These are just tactical features that you have to be aware of as a soldier. On the maybe side, the game has no story, and pretty much no justification for why you're fighting. On the con side, while the game does have the capacity to be fun, satisfying and rewarding, sometimes, in fact sometimes a lot of times, it can be a bit of a grind, a bit of a slog. For example, when you're undertaking your self-designed stealth mission, dying halfway through it, having to respawn miles away, having lost all of your non-standard equipment that you bought specifically for the purpose of completing said mission, usually being no closer to your goal. At its best, this game is a taut, lovely bit of action, with a variety of tactical choices, and it's quite unique too. It doesn't have a story, but it's not completely devoid of personality. Oh yeah. That's gonna give us so much RP. Choip, 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 choip.